I say it's been nation joined by coach Todd Hafner as we preview week number seven of the uh, 2019 season coach coming off a bye week um, we'll talk about that in a second but uh, big week homecoming Graceland start North Division play all that fun stuff so um, you know let's let's rewind first uh, let's go all the way back to uh, almost two weeks ago now with the Missouri Valley uh, victory yeah well it seems like a long time ago right? but um, but we played so good that day and and uh, we had some issues uh, with travel. We couldn't find a place to stay. It was our homecoming. So we ended up traveling same day for an afternoon game. Um, and I, I, I just can't say enough how, how, our kid, how well our kids handled that. You know, um, you know, we told them what we were going to do, how we were going to handle it, and they just bought in like champs. And yeah. um, we got on the bus at 7 o'clock in the morning and, and drove and stopped about halfway and let the kids get off the bus for about a half hour. And, sure. Yeah, and then we got there, and Coach Haugen put him through a little stretching routine before we went on the field, and and um, and we showed up and played so good that day. Our kids uh, up front on offense, and and you know in the backfield and defensively, we were on point the whole game, and um, just really proud of the way they handled the day. Um, and then on top of it all, we played a really good game against a really good football team, and um, again, just just proud of the way they played. Yeah, ran the ball extremely well. Um, just normal smash mouth William Penn yeah. football um, got it got it from the inside the outside um, quarterback got into it you know it was just a, a good overall it, know, it really William was running game. yeah it was and you know and we had some opportunities you know we only threw it three times right. but we threw it a couple more and had some pass interference calls and um, you know we had some opportunities that we really feel we should have completed the ball we we overthrew one. We missed a wide open receiver one time when Alex ran it. Should have probably thrown it. Yeah. Um, dropped one, but you, you know, our, again, our kids handle adversity and things like that. You know, really well right now. Yeah. You know, it's it's next play mentality, and you know, if we don't get it this play, we'll get it the next play. And, and again, our, our kids handled the day just so well and and played with with so much spirit and emotion. It, it was just a really really fun day. Yeah. Um, defensively, you guys held a uh, very talented uh, Jake Bridges to a, a small day. I, well, I don't remember yeah. the stats, but it was a small day. I mean, honestly, yeah. he, he wasn't into it, didn't have uh, any numbers. They didn't score until, what, late third quarter or fourth or whatever right. it was. I mean, by that point, the game was already pretty much decided. Yeah, it, our kids did a great job of, of keeping them under wraps. Yeah. You know, we sacked him six or seven times. Right, right. And, you know, we, we sacked him five times last year. Uh, but we had so many more opportunities and, and this year they tried to get rid of the ball a little bit quicker um, but still he gave us some opportunities he didn't really have any big runs like he did a year ago and um, our kids just did a really good job of once they got his, their hands on him getting him to the ground uh, Ray Sean Coleman was unbelievable he had three and a half sacks and I think on you know three of them he hit the ball out of the guy's hand right. we only got one but right. the two other times you know they were fortunate to bounce right back up to him so yeah. he, he was unreal uh, that day and so um, you know, while we're talking about Rayshon, uh, the new all-time sack right. leader at William Penn, what a great accomplishment for that young man. He, yeah. He's come a long way and he's done such a great job and we're very proud that, that he had a big day last Saturday to get him over the hump. So yeah. um, congratulations to him. But, but again, our defense was unbelievable all day. Definitely. Um, all right, fast forward one week. Can't get all the way to this week yet. Let's talk about the, the bye week and getting everybody healthy. Yeah, and that, that was it was big. We, we really needed it. We, we had some guys that were playing that we're really nursing some injuries that we were able to give them some rest and just you know let them let their bodies heal up and I think it really showed Tuesday's practice this week was a little bit sluggish uh, because we really hadn't hit each other or done anything for a week we, we really stayed off of our guys and um, we, t to be honest with you, we only truly practiced one day. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, it was a little bit sluggish Tuesday. Yesterday's practice Wednesday was really good. It was crisp, it was sharp, we looked fast, yeah. um, but on both sides. And so um, the, the week off really did help. It, it really helped us, I think mentally, yeah. just kind of get ourselves back in, in, in I'm okay mode and I'm yeah. ready to go. And I've got five weeks, so let's, let's take care of business. And so um, we had a really good practice yesterday and we're looking for another good one today. Yeah, well, honestly, you know, the, the bye week can't come at a better time when you're talking about, it. it's just perfect timing the way you guys set it up in the conference. You know, just get it right before um, going into real league play and all of that in mid season by that point, you know, yeah. everybody's kind of grinding a little bit. Yeah. And like, man, I was, and especially against the South, which 
you know, let's be honest, had the Norse number Ooh, this year, the, yeah. you know, the South is, is strong, um, or the, the North's a little bit weaker. However you want to look at it, and obviously adding a new team with Clark, too, uh, to the North. But, um, you know, a, a strong, long grind, and they were, yeah. they were ready we, for a break. The, the South has some very good football teams yeah. in it. Let's not, let's, let's not kid ourselves. And, um, you know, it was a week-in, week-out grind. Yeah. And, and we feel, you know, looking at the, the North here, you know, it – there are not, I mean, there are some teams that have been beat up a little bit, but the games were good. Yeah. You know, it wasn't, you know, there were a couple blowouts, but for the most part, you know, Graceland, you know, the team we played this week, played Mid-American Nazarene, and Mid-Am Mid had to score a touchdown in the right. last three minutes of the game to beat them. And, right. and so, and then Mid-Am came here and beat up. I mean, it, it was just, it. it's just a grind. Yeah. It's a yeah. hard schedule. Um, you know, we're looking forward to, to coming off the bye week and starting conference play and, um, homecoming week and all the fun stuff that has gone along with that. And we've really encouraged our kids to to be involved, get involved. Last yeah. night's Powder Puff game was unbelievable. It was yeah, so fun, and fun. the kids got involved. And um, but you know we, we need to play well. Mm -hmm. And you know the way that we've practiced and the way our kids' attitude has been all year, we're looking forward to it. All right. Well, you've already started talking about it. I so know. Let's, sorry. Let's, no, that's all right. No, I, we're just rolling. We're okay. rolling. Okay. Let's talk about Graceland, a uh, team that is pretty much the complete opposite of us offensively. They love passing the ball and um, you know they've had some they have had success. They they will throw it they went well but in the same respect, um, you know, they, they will get themselves in trouble with that and you know it'd be it could be like Missouri Valley where they you know, get themselves sacked quite a bit or yeah. the ball gets stripped or, or interceptions, whatever. So there's a lot of opportunities for success on the defensive side. Well, there, there, there is. And, I, you know, they're, they're so young. Yeah. I mean, you know, they made a coaching transition late. Um, Coach Robinson came in and was a little bit behind the eight ball. He's yeah. really tried to, to put a, a, a quality team on the field. And like I said, you know, you, you see glimpses of, of really good. And, um, you know, and so you, you're always concerned about that as a coach. Yeah. And, you know, they've had an extra week here to really maybe refine some things or do some things a little bit different. Um, but the youth of their team right now comes out at times. Yeah. And so, um, you know, up front, offensively and defensively, they're really young. Um, you know, we're very fortunate that we're really old. Right. Uh, and so we're, we're hoping that we could take advantage of some of that. Um, you know, their, their quarterback has been sacked a few times and we're, we've been pretty good at that. So hopefully we can continue to be good. Our young secondary has come so far. It's been so fun to watch all yeah. those guys mature and, and really, you know, find their way in our system. And, um, you know, they're making the right checks. They're putting themselves in the right spot. They don't have to think as much. They can react now and make some plays. And so they, they've really done a good job with that. You know, offensively, you know, we, we think we just need to continue to, to do what we do. Like I said, yesterday's practice was really good. Our kids were really sharp. And, um, and so, you know, special teams wise, we just need to make sure that we're doing things the right way, you know, get yeah. people to the ground and don't have any kicks blocked and, and make sure that, that we're, we're holding up our end of the bargain in the special teams game. Definitely. Homecoming week, so you know that the, uh, uh, attitudes, the, the the emphasis on the game is a little heightened. You know, everybody's excited. You know, they got some. Hopefully, you have quite a few uh, recent grads coming back, and they can you know do a good little you know rally cry to sure. the guys, maybe in the locker room, however you do that, whatever. But you know, they'll get them a little more pumped up. Like, hey, we want to win in front of you know all these old dogs and everything. <laughs> you know, show them that this 2019 uh, squad is you know for real, and that we can do a lot of stuff so talk about the mentality about homecoming this week well it's i i think from sunday when we meet and we talk to our kids about the importance of winning a game on saturday yeah. and so you know everything builds up to that but we also encourage our kids to be active during yeah. the week get involved in the the homecoming events you know we had a volleyball game we had powder puff football last night Friday night we have a pep rally. I mean, right. be involved in yeah. those things because those are all the memories that you're trying to build. Yeah. I mean, that's why you're here. Yeah. And so being involved in all that, plus, you know, there's always a nicer crowd. There, the, you know, we get to see kids that have played for us yeah. from a few years ago and, and a lot of years ago to, to even last year. You know, yeah. they come back and, and, and want to see what's going on. And this is the only game that they come to. And so um, we want to play well. We want to encourage you know, all of our alumni to come back and, and continue to support us. And um, it's been great. And, and we're really hoping to see a bunch of them this weekend. And hopefully we can play well and win a game. Definitely. Speaking about uh, one of them, uh, Andy Stokes, um, graduated in 05. 
Yes. We'll go with the 506. Yep. Either way, um, one of your first players um, in your in your tenure here, uh, he is being inducted into the Hall of Fame along with some other guys from back in the 70s that obviously you didn't coach. Right. Um, but I probably know him. Right, right. Yeah, 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 you yeah. probably know him, yeah, Marty. Yeah, yeah. yeah David. <laughs> Uh, but you know, let's talk about Andy a little bit, and you know those early years of William Penn football, and how that has, you know, built that foundation of what William Penn football is today. Well, I, I think from day one, when, the day I interviewed, you know, you had Paul Osted and and Steve Castor and a couple other guys that that were kind of showing me around, and and I was asking them questions, and the first thing they said, that I asked them was, well, what does this program need to really get moving in the right direction and you know they listed a lot of things and discipline was one of them and someone that cares about us was one of them and, and you know just an overall feel that we know what, what's going on yeah. and um, so you know to, to, to have Andy and that, now him going into the Hall of Fame Andy was obviously a great football player um, but Andy was was one of the leaders in that group when I came in and yeah. uh, you know he he, he he was a little bit unsure about me and, and the staff, and, and but but Andy, once things got going, really bought into what we were doing. Um, he, along with you know Chaz Olson and a few of those other guys that that really played hard. They were good football players, and um, they kind of showed you know the guys behind them. Okay, if we play hard, if we buy in, if we do these things then we're gonna be able to turn this thing around. So, you know, you talked about the foundation. That that crew definitely said it because there were plenty of good football players in that group. And, um, you know, with Andy now going into the Hall of Fame, he's had such a great career. Not only, you know, his he got drafted and, and played, spent some time on some practice squads in the NFL, but as a high school coach and mentor to young kids, um, he has definitely set the bar very high. He's yeah. won state championships. He's He's mentoring kids, and he, he's doing such a fantastic job of, of everything in life that now we can say, okay, this he, Andy's in the Hall of Fame, but yes, he is doing everything the right way. He's got a great family. He's doing things um, in high school coaching and high school teaching, and um, you know, if you model your, yourself to be like that, right. uh, you're going to be in good shape. So the, that crew definitely set the foundation. We're excited that, that he's getting in the Hall of Fame and that he'll be back, and I really do look forward to seeing him. Definitely. All right, um, any uh, final keys to success on Saturday to get uh, win number one in the North Division play and get the ball rolling in the right direction? Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing is well, we need to control both sides of the football up front. Um, you know, obviously, you know, we talk about turnovers and everything, but I think controlling the line of scrimmage this week will be big. Uh, I think that, um, you know, like I said, they're young up front, so. You know, hopefully they're going to get in a bunch of different fronts. They're going to get in a bunch of different formations. Um, but hopefully we can control the line of scrimmage. And if we can do that, we feel we should have success. Definitely. All right, Coach. Uh, best of luck on Saturday. Uh, it's a all-day everything going on. Graceland is here for soccer, um, friends one soccer. Women at 11, men at 1.30. And then football at 2.30. Lots of other things going on, lots of uh, parties, lots of tailgaters. Uh, so definitely come out to, if you're not already planning to, definitely come to Oskaloosa on Saturday. Enjoy uh, the 2019 homecoming activities. Um, and you know, we're going to be here. We're going to have a lot of fun. It'll so. be a lot of fun. Definitely. Be right. great. Thanks, Thank Coach. You. Yep.